it's normal to not listen to the intuitive sense because look, we can monetize that. We can monetize self-abandonment. It's great. You can pick up addictions. You can, but when you're like in the vibe, when you're like in alignment and you're working out and you're eating nutritious foods, like we all know what decisions are pro-life and what decisions are pro-death. And, you know, it's, it's about eradicating the pro-death ones, which means that you're actually celebrating life, vitality, and you're saying, I'm, I'm here for a reason. And man, you know, I'm, I'm not spouting from the rooftops here or from the clouds being like, just do what I, cause I certainly have resisted like fuck for the last three years been like, Oh no, I got, I got to keep doing this. I got to stay the same. I got to, it's too risky to be loud. It's too risky to share opposing feelings, but realizing that the risk actually is much greater staying the same in my experience. Yeah, very much. And then the impact that that has on the body and on your throat and your throat chakra and all your the thyroid, energy, you know, yeah. it's the, the, the energy of the line between the throat and the heart space is massive. Like it's such a potent portal and so many, um, yeah, just people struggle with their voice. You know, that's one of the biggest things that comes up in sessions is, people really knowing what they want to say, but not saying it. People knowing what they want to express in relationships, but not saying it. No, like the sessions that I always find are really interesting. In the end, I'm giving information that people know, but they actually just need to hear from someone who doesn't know them, who's literally yeah. channeling through what wants to happen, you know, so that they can see the choices. I'm not here to tell someone what to do. It's like these are, this is what's in front of you. But also I think people lose scope sometimes of, I get to, they show me like the timeline. So they'll be like, this happened when you were 15, this when happened when you were 22, so that people can see the repetitive pattern that we're repeating because we forget that we're just sometimes on these loops that we don't end off, that we don't complete. And so when we see the repetitive pattern in our own life, but then we also see that as an ancestral loop because then they're like, ancestors will come through in a session and they're like, oh, we did this too. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is this was our problem too. Oh, we were leaving, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You're like, wait, um, so I am the first one entrusted with the possibility of ending this loop. And I think that's the yeah. beautiful thing about being able to have the awareness, the tools, the gifts, the whatever support community guide that says, actually, you don't have to do this again. Yeah. Because man, and and then you become the first first person in your lineage who's since that that behavior has begun to move through it. And that's why I think what's so powerful about, let's say, setting a boundary or leaving a relationship or starting one, finally opening up to love is people will say, well, why is it so hard? All I need to do is say like, no, I don't want to go to the movie or no, I don't, whatever. And I'm like, because it's so much greater. Like you have a whole cellular DNA construct that remembers that the last time someone truly stood in their power, they might've died. They might've been raped. They might've been, you know, uh, assaulted, sent to jail, you know, whatever it might be. And it's like, that's so much to to stand up against because you're not just standing up against and it can also be something as sim simple as like you've overheard something as a child like you've overheard a conversation or you've promised yourself something as a kid where you're like oh I'm not going to do it that way it's always really interesting the the information that comes through of our our school experiences and our schooling experiences and the the, the connection to friendships and how that those first school friendships those those friendships that you have in the playground really shape <laughs> your um your romantic partnerships of how you interact and how you set right. boundaries and um i i took that for granted as a kid like you don't you don't realize that but on reflection back and what's come through in client sessions is those childhood friendships inform so much about ourselves yeah, the beliefs we create about ourselves, the vulnerabilities, the wounding, the betrayals, the rejections. It is, you know, it, it's painfully fascinating to me that, you know, we have, let's say, one major rejection or betrayal, maybe numerous, mm -hmm. um, but it only takes one. Yeah. And all of a sudden, 
we make every connection mean it's going to lead to that wound, that injury, 